Hi and welcome to the Home Engineers channel. Um, today what I'm going to be talking about is a tool that I've made for shortening um, rivets. Um, some people call them buck rivets, solid rivets. Um, <clears throat> so this is what I'm going to um, talk about cutting down today. So the tool I've actually made um, is, is, is like a guillotine for which this tool will slide backwards and forth. So this is actually the cutting blade. And this is the top plate that the rivets fit through, which is eighth of an inch thick. Um, so what I've done is I've made it so a return spring can fit inside. These holes correspond with these holes here. Um, I've also relieved the, the, the back uh, of the smaller um, rivets, which are a sixteenth. And on the bigger one, um, I've left them solid. But what I have done in the back of the um rivets to make it a bit clearer and give him a bit bit of a shear angle is i've used a taper reamer now obviously not not this one on on here because obviously that one's too big um and this was a small one that again i don't know no that one's too small to go that's too small to go through so it was somewhere in between there so it's actually got a bit of clearance and then these were then hardened and tempered back and um, the front plates are gauge plate and they've been hardened as well. So all that does slips on there and slip the washer in. And then what we then got is these screws just to hold it all together. Uh, the idea is you put the rivet through um, the holes. When this is pushed, it will then shear off the rivets. Now there was a company a long time ago called Aaron Tools that used to make something very similar to this but it only ever did uh, one rivet at a time, I believe. Um, and when you've got quite a few rivets to put into a, a, a model, um, I just thought it'd be a lot more beneficial to have it so it would cut um, several at a time. Uh, the other <coughs> pieces you can see on the table are the other ones I've made um, for different sizes. So this one is for 3 16 and quarter. Um, that one there's for eighth, and um, I've got another one here that I haven't hardened yet, uh, and that's the size rivet there, and that's the, the base plate for it, uh, or the cutting plate. Um, once I get round to actually making it for that size, size rivet, so I'll just quickly nip these down while we're talking. The other things you can see on the table are the shims I've made. Now I'm very fortunate that I've got access to a CNC machine. So I've made um, quite a few different um, shims. So the idea is once I've got them set to a, a size, I can clip them together and I can just put a label on them so I know what size they are for the future. I've also made um, the shims different thicknesses. So these are very, very thin ones. Uh, they are half a mil. These are one millimeter wide shims and these ones are 1.5 um, so nearly 16th on those so because the this is what i'm trying to do is to put um, dummy rivets in all these holes here for the side of the traction engine just to make it look nice because that's what the original would have would have sort of had um, holding it to the to the boiler um but in this case i'm not going to do that because the boiler's copper and it will just they just sit up against it um so it looks like it's um riveted to the to the boiler so the, the problem is because this is only a 16 thick material i have to make sure that i get the rivets the right size to um get the heads to look the same both sides now there is a formula and this is um hopefully you can see it on the is the material that I've got is a 16th and the normal rule of thumb is that you have one and a half times the diameter sticking through to create the head on the other side uh, and I've got a formula there that you can see so in this case with the cutter blade is an eighth um, if I was to put it in there and have this as the cut line unfortunately the, the rivets would be cut off at an eighth so hence why I've got the shims is I can then put um, a shim underneath it so that I can then jack the head off and then when I shear it, the rivet should then be the correct length. 
Okay, so hopefully now with that going backwards and that was backwards and forwards. Um, this is the the shim I'm going to use, so I can place the shim over. I'm only going to do one rivet um, because obviously I need to check that I've actually got it right. So slide that in. So that now has you've got the eighth of an inch thickness of the plate plus the thickness of the shim and hopefully when that's sheared off that should then give us the correct size i'm just going to turn you around to the where i hope to So hopefully, I'm going to do it on the, the press. Now, <coughs> what I've also done is because the, the blade um, is very close to the size of one of the slots on the on, on here, I've made this as a, 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 temp, a, a base plate so that it can then um, be pushed down into that. So put that over there, put it over the top, bring it down, and that's sheared the rivet off. Right. So lift out the rivet and you can see that is considerably shorter than the the obviously the original um, because it has actually been sheared off. Now I've got a, a sample piece here uh, and what I will do first is I'll put the longer one in and this is my um, riveting tool. And I'll show you what happens when you use a rivet that's too long. And you end up with a very, very nasty looking head. Um, and it just doesn't look very pretty. So what we do, we will put the shortened one down. Push that in. needs a little bit more of adjustment but if you look closely that head certainly looks a lot nicer than the the, the wrong length with a little bit more um, messing about with the riveting tool I think I'll be able to get that a lot lot neater and then that means all the rivets in there will look a lot lot tidier um, on the model and also bearing in mind the the formed the um, the formed head the original formed head will be on the outside and the other head will be on the inside. Um, so you won't actually see that anyway, um, but it's just to make sure that I know it's it's correct and it's, it's um, held in place correctly. Okay, well, I hope you found that of uh, interest. Um, and like I say, Aaron Tools originally made um, a tool similar to this, but you could only do one rivet at a time. Also, they didn't supply shims. I think you had to make up like washers to go under each one. And obviously the advantage of these shims is I can actually stack them together. So uh, if I wanted, um, say, uh, a two mil, I can actually step the shims 
together to give me a, a combination of different sizes uh, of um, shims underneath the head of the, the tool. Okay, well, thank you very much for watching. I hope it's been of interest. And um, if you've liked it, um, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.